This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today we're up to the Bant Color Challenge, and I've got a brew of my own. It's like Team or Reclamation, but with Bant, which means we are going to lean on March of the Multitudes to be our win con, making a million 1-1 one -one soldier tokens with lifelink. I think the format's pretty low on sweepers at the moment. Sometimes the fires decks will have them, but a lot of decks will not. We also get to run to ferry ourselves, which can let us keep the opponent from playing instant speed effects and can be very useful against counter spells, which can give the deck a hard time. We're also running four copies of Mystical Dispute because I think you do need counter spells in the current meta if you're not playing an aggro deck. Cop you just have to be able to counter things like Ember Cleave or the opponent's Teferi. I think Mystical Dispute is among the best things you can do because for only one mana, you can counter the opponent's counter to resolve your key spell if you're in a matchup where they're holding up an Absorb, for example, to stop your Wilderness Reclamation. Don't try to counter Dovin's Veto. Pro tip. Brazen Borrower is also there to slow down the early game and can kind of fit in this spot over here. It's a very important card. If you don't, if you have a hand without Gross Spiral or Brazen Borrower, you better be on the play with a Teferi, because otherwise I don't think you can keep the hand. It's a very slow deck, needs very specific hands to compete. We have Nissa who shakes the world, combining with Wilderness Reclamation for the March of the Millions, which hopefully will be enough to overwhelm several opponents. And Chemister's Insight, of course, draws cards, keeps the deck moving, and gets you more and more land drops and finds the March of the Multitudes and the Nissa who shakes the world. In the mana base, we have three Castle Vantress to help us scry. I also ran Blast Zone in the deck for a while, but just found I never wanted to use it, unfortunately. So don't know if that was a mis... Like, there are times when I miss Blast Zone, but it just caused too many issues and was rarely used, so... Don't think it's going to get play. We do run 28 lands because if we miss a land drop with this deck before our fifth one, we probably lose on the spot. So it's go I've been starting to go a bit overkill with lands on decks like this, but it's I think it's won me more games than it's lost me, which is kind of bizarre. I think that the Golos field decks kind of they changed the world as far as how many lands you should run in a deck. Those decks wanted to play lands all the way through turn 7, 8, etc. So they ran up to 29, 30s. I even saw a build with 31 lands registered by a pro player. And it showed that if you need to make your land drops to win, maybe you should run more land. So that's what we're giving a try to here in this deck today. All right, let's dive in and let the Reclamation March of the Multitudes backed by Nissa nonsense begin. All right, we've got the right mana and we have a play. We're on the draw for the third game in a row. If this is the first one you're seeing, it's because I didn't resolve a spell in the last two. They went that badly. <laughs> Combo deck needs better draws to compete. That's just the way it is. All right, would you like to Fairy Mystical Dispute or Nyssa? Our opponent probably drew the dress. They didn't play it on turn one. What are they up to? Might be a discard. Wait, what? 111 cards. All right, this is the O2 bracket we're in. I took the counter. Maybe I should keep this because if they're a discard deck, we just need more of these. And I'd be better off with it than without it. Their next discard spell would almost certainly take the Reclamation. And it's kind of weird that they left this one alone. I don't trust it. I think they have shenanigans. Let's go ahead and run out the Time Raveler. I don't know what they can do with this food, but they might have Murderous Rider to deal with the Time Raveler. So, and I want this card. I want this card, you guys. You gotta keep this deck moving. Okay, you have another color. We get text out something now. I think that means Reclamation is good to go. And a Healer's Hawk, yeah. We're up against the nonsense of the format. I've got time. Well, you're probably going to die, Teferi, but it's okay. Let's get you get this going. We have Chemister's Insight, Nyssa, Brazen Borrower. Some good stuff. 
It's a lifelink hasty bane hound. The opponent knows about the borrower, so everything pro needs to attack to fairy to kill him. Of course, you could pump the fen lurker. Oh, all right. Do I bounce the hawk then? Protect the Teferi? I think that sounds fine. I can always insight later. I have things to do with my mana right now. Well, you're still alive, Teferi. Look on the bright side of life. Growth Spiral. Easy plus, nothing else to do. Nissa, who shakes the freaking world. Let's animate a forest so that we can tap it for dubs. That's nature's true power, my friend. Are you impressed? Have you seen such power before? All right, so add mana to the mana pool. Resolve. All right, other plays. We've got this bonus mana. Let's use it. Cast this Chemist's Insight. And I think we'll replay the Chemist's when the time is right. So let's pass. Want to do some blocking possibly with this Temple Garden. Right now, discarding Gross Spiral sounds fine. Although maybe discarding other Nissa is good too. We'll see what the opponent does. We will see. Move to attacks. Bean Hound at Nissa. Fen Lurker at Nissa. I bet Healer's Hawk goes at Nissa. Yes. All right. Well, I'm not sure what the shenanigans are, but the opponent doesn't have enough mana to pump the Fen Lurker twice, and that's the most threatening thing. So I will block the Fen Lurker and see what tricks the opponent has, if any. Torin's Thirst. Okay, that's a removal spell. Let's fire up the Chemist's Insight. I'll drop off Nyssa since Nyssa looks like she's going to survive just fine. Oh, that's a lot of land. But one of the lands is a key land in Castle Vantress, which we can use with Wilderness Reclamation to scry through our deck and do a bunch of cool things. So let's make sure we get you on the battlefield. Hold on. So we definitely want to plus you. And I think we want a Growth Spiral. And I think we want to untap the forest. Actually, no. We're okay without it. We can sneak another forest onto the battlefield here. Here's a breeding pool. I think we're okay paying two life for that. And now we have more mana to do our things with. Now we can scry. Make sure we put a stop on our end step. Another growth spiral is a pretty good one, but we're not going to draw it this turn. So I don't think it's worth it. Let's plus and animate the breeding pool. Send it in for damage. Pass to the end step. Trigger Wilderness Reclamation. Put the mana on the stack. Resolve the Wilderness Reclamation trigger. And we can scry with the castle. Keep digging through the deck. There's our March of the Multitudes and a Teferi. I'll take both, but I definitely want that March. We could take our counter shields down by having this borrower, and I think we may as well. It uses mana and leaves our breeding pool untapped. That way it can threaten to block the healer's hawk. And pass the turn. The opponent has the Elder Spell to clean up our party. Feels bad, yo. Dead Planeswalkers. And a Conclave Tribunal. Wow, what a turn. They were slow rolling that. They are still behind in some creatures, though. And March of the Multitudes is no slouch. So I don't want to shuffle away my Teferi. I think it's still a good draw. We can bounce the Tribunal and make a ton of mana with March of the Multitudes. So we'll play this tapped. 
I don't want to trade my borrower for the hawk, so we'll just send the breeding pool. And we'll say go, and our plan is to scry. And probably keep this to fairy, but maybe scry the card beneath it. Revenge of Ravens. Hmm. Hmm. Could be a problem. What I need is a another brazen borrower. Alright, Teferi can come down. It can bounce the Conclave Tribunal. That will get us back Wilderness Reclamation. Which will let us make a whole bunch of March of the Multitude creatures. We can attack here and trigger revenge once and send in the breeding pool. The opponent doesn't have great blocks. Damage. All right, go to end of turn, trigger on the stack, add all the mana. Resolve that. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, March of the Multitudes for 10. Nope. March of the Multitudes for 10. Hmm, I must have miscounted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Very important to check these things. Wouldn't want to leave any of that value on the table. Brazen Borrower can bounce Revenge of Ravens next turn and get in our huge attack. Here's the Tribunal. Tribunal targets Wilderness Reclamation. Opponent can attack and kill the Teferi if they wish. I think that's just fine here. I don't believe this is a good time for a Wilderness, for a Castle Bantress upkeep scry. I think we don't have quite enough mana to pay it off. It takes too many options off the table. Do we know anything on the bottom? Yeah, two cards we really don't want to draw, so we don't want to crack a Fable Passage. Deck thinning isn't deck thinning. If you're shuffling back in cards, you don't want to draw. All right, let's go blue and blue. Petty Theft, bounce your Revenge of the Ravens. Attack with all my creatures. I believe the opponent can survive this turn at two life, and we gain a ton of life ourselves. Okay, I think that block leaves it lethal. They needed to block the breeding pool. All right, we go first, we have a borrower. Things are looking great. We'll have to locate a wilderness reclamation to really kick the deck into high gear, but it doesn't look like I should die on turn three. Temple of Milady. Second March, boo. This holds up the Brazen Borrower, so I think I like it, even if it means I have to shock on future turns. There's something I can't borrow, though. Right, so we can play this tapped. Wilderness Reclamation is a good find. Our opponent has a Questing Beast. I'm bouncing it. They sure do. Always has it. Before your animation is even done, get the heck out of here. Nobody wants to see that animation. And the pressure begins. Let's hope the opponent can't interact with our wilderness reclamation so we can draw cards, then make a bunch of creatures with March. Although the March creatures can't stop the beast. It's a it's a problem without a without a doubt. All right, draw two. Nissa who shakes the world is a good one. So let's untap a forest so it can make extra mana 
And I think we'll just go with basic forest here. No attacks into the beast. Now the question is, do we chemister's insight? Or do we march now? How much would march be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a good march. And then we could march into march potentially and have even more. Okay. Make sure it's everything we can pay. It is. And pass. Our opponent has a massacre girl. At least they kill their own questing beast in the process. We didn't leave a green source open to march for five. That might have been a mistake. We could have left the forest untapped and marched for even more. We'll see. We will see how this shakes out. The Great Henge. Hmm. More value, I don't think, is the answer here. The opponent should attack face with the beast. I'm not, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's attacked a planeswalker with my questing beast before. And four damage to Nyssa. Does the opponent have another play off this hinge? Not yet. Ooh, Brazen Borrower. Hype. Okay. Mark that end step. A2 life here. Blue. Petty Theft your Beast. Free up a nice big attack here. Plus the Nyssa. Untap the Breeding Pool. We could march for a million. I think I'll just attack with my creatures, though, and march on end step, which is still going to be a very, very large march. What you got? It's going to gain a ton of life, too. Maybe we don't want to march. Maybe playing around Massacre Girl is the right play. All right. I, I think I like that. I think this is a good time to resolve some Chemister's Insights. We're so far ahead, I don't think we need to march even more. Alright, that's a bunch of land. Let's add blue, add green, resolve. Play another one. This one's a forest, so let's hang on to the breeding pool. It produces extra Nissa mana. All right. We get a growth spiral, so we can make a blue here. Cast the growth spiral. One, two, three, four. I do think, no. Yeah, I can use more mana if I need it. So we play that. And... We don't have any more mana floating, so we can pass here and do the rest of our plays at instant speed when the time comes. I mean, we can still do a pretty epic march if we need to, but we can also run out Brazen Borrowers if, they, if the opponent has Massacre Girl. Scry to the top. Oh boy. What do you think they've got there? What are they building in there? It must be good. And is this a Casualties of War? It looks like one. I don't know if that will save our opponent, though. Here comes the questing beast. All right. What else you got? <laughs> Make it a spicy one. Love struck beast, sure. Paradise druid, sure. Draw a card. Yep. Henge is nice in the long game. I don't think I'm giving my opponent the time, though, to take advantage. Passage for Swamp. Swamp for Falmir Knight. Yeah. Draw another card. Sure. It's a good turn. Bounce the Questing Beast with Petty Theft. We can play Brazen Borrower, or we can march. One, two, three, four, five. 
Yeah, I don't think it matters anymore. I'll just play the borrower. Math is for blockers. Behold, nature's true power. Well said, Nissa. You always know what to say to just tilt people right now. Because Nissa, who shakes the world, is a pretty good magic card. It must be known. That's game. We're on the play. We have an interaction from Borrower. We don't have enough land. But the hand is so good. I need like two of my top three cards to be lands. And it's a good hand. And we run 26, so there's a 50-50 chance. So I just need to win two out of three coin flips to have a great hand. I think that's worth it. I might be wrong. There's nothing I would want to bounce on turn two. Not even that. Nice. I think we can go ahead and play you tapped rather than worry about having borrower available right away. I think that keeping our life total high is going to be important. All right, can we win the next coin flip? That's a lot of 1-1s. One and an innkeeper, yep. We win the coin flip. Excellent. Let's keep the land coming. Let's not slow down on this. So right now we have Wilderness Reclamation into Insight, into Nyssa who shakes the world, possibly into Wilderness Reclamation. So we're definitely bouncing off this Lovestruck Beast just to slow the opponent down. They probably questing beast me anyway, but you know how it is. All right, don't need the other white. Let's keep getting forests to make Nyssa epic. Yeah, it's just a race from here. Can we march of the multitudes? Can we find it? Can we cast it? The opponent's going for all the card draw in the world, and that's, I mean, that's fine. There's not much we can do about it anyway. Anybody else miss settle the wreckage? Draw two. Ow. Hmm. If I get the Nyssa, I think the Nyssa will die. So I think it's a bad time for the Nyssa. I think I have to take a pretty huge face hit and play another Reclamation. If I'm going to do that, I might want the castle because I might end up scrying with it. Trigger, trigger, add blue. Resolve one. Cast insight. Throw spirals good. You can play that now to get another land onto the battlefield. We'll play you so that we have an extra mana. I think it might matter. One, two, three. If we cast an insight here for three, we have three mana open for dispute, so it matters. That for blue, resolve. Cast another Insight. Drop off the Shock Land. Draw two. Teferi. Still not a March of the Multitudes. Just about any play the opponent makes, so at three mana or more, I will definitely counter. Just to slow them down. Down to four. Big turn needs to happen. We're definitely out of time for nonsense, and we have a million mana. Counter the beast. 
Let the opponent just mega gas up their hand and see what they can do with it. Paradise Druid, sure. Double Nissa. My chemistry's insight will have to reveal some serious cards. All right, so green, blue, 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 green. Here's the shaker of the world. Untap a forest to make sure we have plenty of mana here. Didn't make a white available to use the to fairy. That's probably an oversight. Make sure we set this end step stop, by the way. Let's bounce away the lovestruck beast. Another card. Might as well attack. And now some big draw steps coming up. Float the mana. Resolve. Let's use the castle here. Give ourselves every chance to find March. We did. It's okay. Everything's fine. No, this makes more mana. We don't need a second castle. Tap for green. Resolve. So... I could ambush the opponent with the March of the Multitudes. That would play around Legion's End. What I would give up, what I would give up are two, is two mana. But I can basically make it back if I tap this for a blue, play the Growth Spiral, and play the other green. But then I still lose two mana. Maybe I'll draw something to do with it, though. No. But we get a Forest, which makes two mana. So I think I broke even. And let's see what the opponent has. If we get them to charge in, we gain a whole bunch of life with March, and then turn around and smack them. Dilemma, indeed. Opponent shocks on the overgrown tomb. A very interesting attack would be if they could kill the, the forest and attack with only the questing beast, but that doesn't play around Brazen Borrower, which is a known quantity. But if they find a way to remove the forest, it works. Here they come. All right, we can't tap this forest. It has to block the questing beast. Actually, it doesn't. We can gain enough life that we don't need it. So that's seven one ones. And the big ta-da for our opponent. We'll lay out these blocks. And then we'll block with the rest of them just to gain the extra life. As long as we don't drop block the Paradise Druid, we're not really losing anything there. Zero? <gasps> but uh, zero means seven. We're good. Tip Fairy gets munched. Paradise Druid returns. We have a mystical dispute. Hmm. So let's scry a little bit now. Or let's not. So use a Nissa to animate a plains, our least useful land. To so use double Nissa. Untap a forest. Don't think it's a good attack right here. Not yet. We're getting there though. We're getting there. But we have multiple blockers for the questing beast. So end of turn, abilities on the stack. Let's scry it up. No, no. Float some mana.
try it up. I guess I'll take an insight. It's two more looks. And we can play this borrower with the mana. And resolve. Because we're not going to use the rest of this mana anyway. And pass. Our opponent has a full grip. Let's see what it does. I really hope they go for a Casualties of War. Make my Mystic Dispute mean something. Now, have they seen Mystical Dispute in the match? They have. So they know we play it. And they do go for Casualties of War. Snap that off. And they scoop. They knew we scryed to the top, so they're assuming we have something good. But, uh, yeah, getting your six mana spell countered is the hard feels. I hope you enjoyed today's video with Bant Reclamation Combo. There's a lot of reasons why the Team of Reclamation build is better, but a big point in favor of Bant is Teferi, Time Raveler, who can help out a lot against counter decks. And when you throw in Mystical Dispute, it is actually very hard for a control deck to keep up with your combo. So I really like that aspect of the matchup. The aggro matchup is tough, but the life gain from the March of the Multitudes creatures can really help if you are fearing burn or over the top stuff. Um, so you might want to give it a try, a little break from the norm. Today's thank you and message in general goes out to Andrea from your brother David in Italy. Apparently, they both like to watch my videos a lot, and it would mean a lot to get a shout out from me around Christmas time. So, Andrea, thank you for watching the videos and supporting the channel, and to all of you, have a very, very happy holiday. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.